Thanks, Danish, and good afternoon to everyone. I'll proceed to share my screen first. That's my screen up. And is my slides on? All good? Yes. Okay, great. Firstly, thanks for inviting me to this webinar. Agenda for the webinar. Now, during the past two elections and the past two general elections, I had the opportunity to learn and see how various constituencies work to put up pacha teams. So I'm putting a structure on these slides relating to what I experienced. Organizing teams. This slide gives an overview in organizing pacha teams. The boxes on the slide will represent uh, in a linear fashion, all right, they will be presented in a linear fashion, but in practice, they are simultaneous or overlapping events. First box there, electoral roles. Looking at electoral roles is an important task. The ideal situation will be looking at previous electoral roles and comparing them to the present. The present copy represents the number of pacha you need. Sometimes you actually cater for extra uh, people there. While the movement uh, of voters in the past rows to the present, they represent the trend in voter numbers. The electoral row also contains number of saluran and the number of voters laid down clearly under each tempat mengundi. All right, these are screenshots from Sermanyi electoral rows in the past PRK. Now the question actually, uh, which arise at this point uh, in time, maybe how many people do you need? All right. So you, you got a uh, number of voters actually laid out quite clearly under each tempat mengundi. So, and the next question is, what story does your data tell you? Now in this uh, particular graph, uh, which I have on the slide here, this is derivative from an analysis done by my colleague, Mr. Lee. Now, this was back in the last G in Wangsa Manju constituency. The graph told the story of this. Now, two years preceding to the 2018 elections, right? The spike that you see here are actually the increase in number of voters, which of course you can see there is more than 100%, a few hundred percent there coming from Pendaftaran Tuka Alamat. So that's the story the data told for this constituency. Xbox, forming teams. Teams also include Pacha support and admin teams, other than actual Pacha teams themselves. For example, uh, in the last G, in the last uh, 14 G, right, the Wangsa Maju constituency had a support team which prepared Pacha kids. And they cross out the advanced voters in the electoral roles then went into every single pacha kit. They also prepared other uh, important tasks, such, such as uh, preparing uh, underlying documents. Well, at the time, right? Uh, police reports were made to certain things. So they actually prepared these things as well. So eventually, many of them wore double heads and served as pacha too. So when you recruit people, uh, immediately assign in to the teams where you need them to be after consultation with them, of course. Now again, the best tool for this is the spreadsheet. So design a template which will, which will show you the numbers which you have recruited and show you the shortfalls as well. Next one up, recruiting. Now when you talk about recruiting, identify the channel or sources of recruiting for your team members. Uh, they could be individuals in the constituency. They could be from uh, organized local communities, from civil society uh, channels as well, and so on and so forth. All right. Recruiting also means recruiting the right people. Why is that? Now, this is very important because the question arises, right? What story did your data tell you? It's an important question in selecting the right personality. In, and also in, in crafting your data, uh, your, your pacha training content 
is it going to be customized training or is it going to be standard training okay assigning this is about assigning pacha and admin volunteers into the proper teams when people are recruited get their commitment to serve on polling day ask them what slot they want assign them to the time slot and start run without delay this is just a spreadsheet job recording things on a uh, on the cell all right share your assignment schedule with the bachas all right do not be afraid to assign and reassign people make sure everybody understands this because it's a necessity eh, to feed the right people into suitable roles because not everyone is bachas some of their support teams all right this last box here training as a general guide one may want to carry out basic pacha training at the beginning. This is to stimulate interest in the newbies and address myths concerning polling processes. Now, the training content is tightened into shorter sessions, uh, maybe containing more relevant scripts as the polling day approaches. Okay, one may also want to put up a higher frequency or higher frequency more la, more more training sessions huh, of shorter training sessions. That means more shorter ones all right as the polling day approaches okay so you may want also to spread out your training sessions uh, to prevent overcrowding now it doesn't make sense to have say what 50 people or maybe 100 people in one single session so it's, it's not a training session anymore but it's more of a seminar okay so the boxes may i rewind everyone actually uh, takes place all in overlapping uh, or rather simultaneous uh, fashion okay Next slide. Let me talk a bit of a little bit of training. All right. Now, training. Uh, how basic or advanced does one need to get? Okay, there's this box here which says basic, and this thing here called election day as training day, uh, election day approaches. Now, I recommend candidates of elections, right, to look at their electoral roll closely. The question arises again which is quite repetitive. What story did the data tell you? This goes into customizing your training content to address strengths and weaknesses faced by the constituency, all right? So basic training, the basic training, well, get the basic training done with the number of volunteers that you have in hand. You don't wait. The basic training usually takes half a day, incorporating all the do's and don'ts on bacha operations. It is crucial uh, because some pachas they need to unlearn the past training they have acquired. Hence, basic training is not only for newbies, no. Uh, it usually takes place uh, one or two years before the perceived date of the election. Now, if this is no longer relevant, right? Um, start off the basic training as soon as you can. Okay, so basic training does not stop because you see, recruitment does not stop as well. When one recruits new people into the team, the basic training will get them up to speed on what to do on polling day. So basic training is very continuous at times. All right. Again, please remember to assign your pachas to their teams once they are recruited. Okay. People, they need time to know one another, which is the team members in the same team huh, as per Saloran. So teams also time uh, need time to, to gel, all right? So this is forming, norming, st uh, storming, and performing by Bruce uh, Tuckman in 1965, okay? Okay, next box here, you see tactical here, and what is it about? No, training sessions, they get shorter, okay? And more drill-like as election day approaches all right they are more drill like and more precise on the constituency's situation which means they're slightly tightened up now all right so basic basic training uh, is usually uh, ref refined uh, okay from a basic training to more of tactical nature okay in about maybe about three months before the perceived date of election so pachas uh, which have been familiarized with the basics right right here they get trained to execute 
polling task like second nature proceeding to election day okay you don't need like a full one day training and all it's, it's not effective anymore so by then right your volunteers are just right they should be having an idea of what to do and the training here will have to sharpen their soul in how to handle polling day like second nature okay so again uh remember you got to remember uh this and uh, remind others also as well now assignment and reassign assignment and reassignment or pachas take place very often sometimes right up to the day of elections you still have changes in your name list okay i flip on to the next slide yeah. okay issues this 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 part actually talks about issues poor interest or short of people now it's a it's a situation where we can't feel any feel every salon you know, with a polling agent so how yeah you can actually assign pacha teams to the tempat mangundi the school that is right which has uh say example the political party right has a historical stronghold of it so assign people to that secondly you can also spread the team to cover more slots For example if uh pacha a right uh serves two hours on a day now the question that arises you can ask a person hey uh could you serve more than maybe two slots maybe four hours half a day or when the need arises the whole day now what i encountered in uh g13 the last two g's right that's what 2014 2013 yeah 2013 right so so uh the teams there serve the whole day from the morning right up to the end of the polling and did counting uh agent work as well okay that was the situation ideal or not well we have to tackle the issue of not enough head count now the next point will be probably address the head count as the shortfall as soon as you can so that there's more time to recruit all right you already have a template shows you how many shortfall and things like that carry out social media uh, recruitment if you can all right you may also seek help from constituencies which has uh, one in big margins large pool of trained people there you can also pull the training pool of p-o-o-l okay that means pull everything together pull training sessions okay? like what happened in the last two g's uh, uh padang sarai kulin kuala Kedah. they actually had joint training uh, or Klang, Shalam, Port Klang, uh, Samantha, Kotaraja, constituencies. They also pulled together training. So people from different areas, right? They came together. There was also uh, in case of Perak, Taiping, surrounding constituencies, not from one political party, but from a couple of political parties joined together to attend one single training. Okay, so from the pooling or training, right? one gets to meet and connect with other constituencies so uh, this makes the transfer volunteers across areas that have shortfall easier okay next point competitive seats ensure the pacha recruited them uh, they support the candidate that, that's of course uh, very important uh. now sometimes pacha drop out due to commitments maybe for health reasons or maybe change in candidate support as well so just remember assignment and reassignment uh, is a norm it takes place right up to the day of election just be prepared by it. so there was also a case in uh one tempat mongundi where was ketua pacha where the pacha did not turn up at all for the start so i had to make uh, certain uh, uh, decisions on the fly and of course also partially replace the empty slot okay next box here sudden changes if the sudden change is related to pacha resignation and of course related to my previous point that i mentioned right be prepared to recruit and assign now recruitment never stops now uh so does assignment and reassignment if you have a bunch of surplus people right you can assign them to support teams if they want 
So make sure that they're happy and they are proud of what they are doing. So this is all volunteerism, right? Okay. So our surplus volunteers can also be reassigned to other areas or constituencies. Now, so hence, don't stop the recruitment process. Ensure your talent pool is full of people. Okay. As for slides, that's the end because I am flipping to another screen. So hang on a second. I'm flipping to an Excel worksheet. Now this Excel worksheet right, represents viewpoint from an Excel trainer, which is myself of course. Oh, I'm trying to actually attempt to throw some ideas on what you can do, okay? So here goes. Now, there are a bunch of stuff here. I'm gonna move my, my, um, want some of my buttons away, okay. There are a bunch of things here. So I walk you through what's going on here. Now this worksheet here that you see on the screen, right? Uh, consists of say records of pachas allocated to the different tapak and the different slots that they want to do. So once people are in, right, assign them immediately. So I'm trying to throw some ideas. It's not that exactly that you need to do this, uh, but you can record in Excel worksheet in a very simple manner, like tempat mengundi, baca name, saluran, shifts. Okay. And on another worksheet, right, you may actually record. Now, this is very, very important. Not may record, must record their data as well. Okay. Now, very simple data here showing name, mobile numbers, and IC numbers. These are not real data. They are contrived data, means dummy data. Okay. Names are not real. IC number is not real. Mobile number is not real. Okay. You can record this way. Now, and also you have things like such as Tempat mongundi, very small table, lah, right? Depending on how many tempat mongundi is, code, daira, that kind of stuff are like, going on. And this is plucked out from the, what else, right? Electoral row, okay? You also have things like maybe pacha shifts, and of course, right here, you got ketua pachas as well. You may actually opt to have the ketua pacha in the pacha team or actually out of the pacha team, meaning they are just purely ketua. It depends on how many people you have. So you have tempat mengundi and the ketua macha themselves. So just make sure they are trustworthy people as usual. Okay. Now, if you have noticed, right, I actually put all these things on separate tables and not on one big, huge worksheet. Because the recommended approach uh, to manage your data properly is to minimize your columns that you have on the worksheet. Don't load up your files. Okay, um, secondly, right, it's like this. Why do you need to separate all things? Are we too free to do things? The reason is very simple, guys. Example here, uh, this, this Pacha located worksheet has quite a bit of names, right? Yes, every, everybody, every Pacha's name assigned to every Saloran and shape, okay? It goes on for a long 100 over rows, okay? If there are any changes, right? I might have to update a hundred rows. You don't see pacha, keto pacha name here, right? They are on a separate table, correct? If I got a change in keto pacha name, I can just update this small tiny column right here. I don't have to update if this bunch of things are on that hundred rows, which you saw just now, right? I'm gonna have to update hundred rows here. So, okay, tips here, keep your columns minimum, separate out your data, according to tables and different worksheets. Okay, now, if they're separated, then how? Okay, there's this business intelligence tool in Excel called uh, Power Pivot. It's sitting on a platform called the data model. I'm going over to there now. Now, what this data model does is it connects now you see all these tables, right? These are the worksheets that I have over here now, which I just walked you through, okay? So they are now here, okay? It connects the different tables together by common attributes. What is a common attribute? 
I'm actually I'm 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 going to show you this. I'm this is the the Kato Pacha table which we saw just now, just consisting of two columns, correct? And this Pacha allocated table, which is about hundred over rows, which you see here, is just right behind here. Okay. So I'm connecting the two tables by a common column. There's the part only. So you need to have a common column to connect the tables together. So same thing here goes, diagram mengundi table, right? I'm connecting to the pacha allocated table by the tempat mengundi column. Okay, but you got to be very careful. Huh? You got to make sure everything is perfect. No, no uh, typos, error mistakes, spelling mistakes and stuff like that. Okay. The other two tables remain unconnected because I'm not using them for now. Okay, now what? Again, right? We have three tables connected. Okay, now these three tables, right, when connected, uh, it's as if the information or data is on one table. Uh. So I just told you the reasons why you don't keep everything in one table, right? Because it's not efficient. Uh. Don't do it. Trust me. Now, what you can do, right, here, you can push out the connected tables, right, and summarize them into a pivot table, which you've seen here. Now, this is called an OLAP pivot table because an OLAP pivot table, different from the traditional pivot table, OLAP pivot table uh, can connect different sources of multiple sources of data together. Okay, so this is what we see here. We got Ketua Pacha, which is from another table. We got uh, Tempat Mungundi, so from another table. And a list of bunch of people assigned to the various shifts. Okay, the bunch of colorful things that you see here are called slices. They function as filters. Now, while they appear very colorful, right? The idea is like this. Okay, example here. I got this tempat mengundi here, right? Right here. Um, let's say I want to focus on something. I got how many here? Okay. Let's say I'm going to click on something here. Uh, this as sekolah jenis uh, kebangsaan, right? If I click on this to filter this, Okay, so this slicer will filter out what I have and give me this school, this tempat mengundi, so that I can work on it. After finishing, I can un undo the slicer and come back to the, you, uh, the, the picture that I had before. Okay, so th these are pointers from a, an Excel trainer perspective on how to manage your tables and data. And also to actually uh, help you minimize uh, your time spent in Excel as well. So that's all I have. Okay, finish. Back to you.